Today we're going to look at changing the subject of the formula. So just a, a quick overview. Changing the subject of the formula is pretty much rearranging of an equation to achieve a different variable. It involves the moving of letters and numbers from left and right of the equal sign to isolate the variable that you need, i.e. just get everything on one side and isolate the variable that you want. So the rules that apply um, are as follows. So we have the opposite of add is subtract, opposite of multiply is divide, and the opposite of the square root is a square. Now, these rules sound simple. Um, you've been doing this for pretty much your whole maths career. However, when you come to put this into practice, a lot of people will forget these three very simple rules. So if we take a look at question number one, question number one asks us to change the subject of the formula to k. And it gives us this expression here where d equals k minus m over t. Now, first thing that I'm going to do is I always write out the equation um, on the paper to start with so I can, I can play about with it. So step one is we have to take the t, because we have to move the m and the t. It's easier to move the t first. So the t in this case is dividing, so it would have to go over as times. So we take the t, bring it across, and it goes over as times. So your equation now becomes dt equals k minus m. Now the next thing that we have to use is get rid of the m. So the m, it's minus m on this side, so when it goes over, it will have to go over as a plus. So your equation now becomes dt plus m equals k. Now that is your final answer, however, it's sometimes a little bit nicer to write the equation as k equals and then dt plus m. So what we have done is we have isolated the k from every other variable, because this equation is an equation for d. So we had to rearrange this and get rid of the minus m and the t so that we had k equals something. And in this case, k equals dt plus m. So if we take a look at question number two, very similar to the last one, however, this time it's an equation for L. So we have L equals 8 plus 6 over Y. Now we have to get rid of the 8 and we have to get rid of the 6. So we have to play about with the variables a little bit more than we did in the previous example. But we'll just take it one step at a time. Now it's easier to remove the 8 first than to remove the 6, because the 6 is involved with the y. So we try and get rid of everything that isn't in directly involved with the y. So this 8 really has nothing to do with the y. So we can take that across first. Now it's plus 8 on that side, so it has to go over as minus. So your equation now becomes L minus 8 equals 6 over y. So the next step is we have to take the y across because it is dividing by the 6, so we need to get this across first. So the y is dividing, so it must go over as times. Now, we can group the L minus 8 in a bracket, because the y will multiply everything, the L and the minus 8. So we just group them in a bracket, make it a bit easier. And this gives us the expression y bracket L minus 8 equals 6. So we have one final thing that we have to do. We've now got to get rid of the L minus 8. Now you could, in essence, take the L across first and then take the 8 across, but it's much easier just to take the entire L minus 8. So L minus 8, in this case, is multiplying the Y, so we have to divide it, the whole thing, by L minus 8. So the final answer becomes 6 divided by L minus 8. So again, what we have done is we took the expression for L and rearranged this to get the equation for Y. So slightly more involved, but a fairly easy, simple example. 
And then question three is we have to change the subject of the formula to B. Now, this is a similar exam style question in that we have a square root and we have a square involved here. We also have multiplication and subtraction as well. So this combines all three of the rules. And there is a, a specific sequence um, that you should follow. When you have a square root and the variable you want is inside it, you must get rid of the square root first. So we have to take the square root across. Now that means that when that goes across, it goes over as a square. So it's going to square the a. So we get a squared equals, now the square root sign disappears from here, and we're just left with what was underneath. It's 4b squared minus c. So now we take the minus c, because again, the minus c has nothing to do with the 4b squared. So we can take that across, and it will go over as plus. So the equation then becomes a squared plus c equals 4b squared. Now, we have to get rid of the 4, and we also have to get rid of the square. And I'm going to just pop these into brackets, group everything together. So the next thing, the easiest thing to do is get rid of the 4 first. Because this square, when it goes over, is going to cover everything. And it's going to make life difficult if we do that first. So we'll take the 4 across. Now, the 4 is multiplying by the b squared. So it would have to go over as a divide. So that means we get a squared plus c all over 4. And that equals b squared. Now the final step is we have to take the square across to the other side. And from the rules, we when we remove the square, we have to take the square root of each side. So you'd have to square root each side. So that means that this goes over to the other side and it becomes the square root of a squared plus c all divided by 4. And that's how you would go about solving that kind of problem there. Now, each of these examples shows a different sequence in which you would have to, to go about solving any of these problems. Now, these problems can range in complexity from you could maybe combine the difficulty of question 3 with the simplicity of question 1. And that would be that would certainly be an exam style question. But so long as you follow the rules from the letter that you're trying to isolate, then you will have no problem in solving these questions. The the trick to these questions is doing it in a clear and concise order. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Let us know any comments in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video.